Here, we don't need those green screen effects all the kids are doing. He, just, he, he tried to put sunglasses on. This is totally not cool. Yeah, really? yeah, he tried to do it again. Every time, Ryan, you try to do a little different thing, you know what you're going to get. That's right. Yep. So you're going to find your own food tonight. I think I'm getting, I'm thinking about getting a new phone case. Phone case? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think there's some, like, some cool phones out there. Like what? Like AOR did one with um, Save the Wave. It's pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah, I think we should look again. Oh, yeah. and, and, and that's uh, that fits an iPhone 1 that you have? Uh, I have an iPhone 3.2, uh, Chris. 3.2? 3.2. And that runs uh, MS-DOS, Windows? What, is it, what does that run? Uh, 97. Oh, 97. Yeah. That, what were you doing in 97? Uh, I was in the fourth grade. Fourth grade? Yeah. Who was your crush? Jack, Miss... Jacqueline McDonald. Jacqueline? Old Jacqueline McDonald? Jacqueline McDonald. Wow. Fourth grade crush. Yeah. Wow, you hear that, Ryan? Who's your crush? What? Wait, what? No, 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 no. no. Yeah, we, uh, good joke, Ryan. Oh, we're... Oh, we're, we're live? What? We're live. Oh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. If you're a lion or if you're Sarah or if you're an easy mark... Uh, thank you for joining us. We're... Ryan, can you oh. play the music? No? Yes? Oh, okay. And we're live! Welcome to Quarantine! With the Chris. I'm your host, Chris. I'm your host, Chris. And uh, we apologize for being late as Ryan continues to try to learn how to surf. And uh, by learn how to surf, he just looks at YouTube videos. Oh, well, he's learning to surf something. Yep. He's Maybe learning to surf the web, yeah. yeah. Hey, surfing the web, uh, all quarantine. We're quarantined with the Chris's uh, season two here. Uh, we're in week six. Uh, and the quarantine doesn't stop until when, Chris? Till our moms tell us? Till whenever our moms tell us. So we'll be doing this show every day that ends in mm. Y, but doesn't start with S. Uh, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for joining. Uh, if you're Easy Mark, if you're Artist, uh, if you're our neighbor, uh, or if you're Rod, uh, or if uh, we want to miss one or two, but if you just joined us, we're waving to you near and far. According to the Chris is live in Los Angeles. It's a special day, Chris. Dude, my note, like... I'm like really itchy today. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. Huh. I need that some of that. What was that? That, that beard wax you have. Oh, uh, Bearded Bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some of that. Yeah, yeah. Stay bearded, stay bastard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we do have a special PSA today, don't we? Uh, what's that? Uh, please be responsible. Uh, wear your masks and keep your uh, physical distancing. Oh, up to six, oh, six feet. Six feet or two meters, as they two say, meters. across the pond. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I think what he's trying to say is please wear an effing mask. Uh, please stay inside as best as you can. Uh, it is a heat wave here in Los Angeles, but uh, just try not to go in large groups of people and spread COVID around like Usain Bolt did at his birthday party. Oh, did he? He did. Mm. Yeah. Shout out to Usain Bolt. Oh, wow. Uh, it's quicker than uh, his, his uh, what is it, 90-yard dash they do? Uh, He's a 20, 20, 20 yarder, right? I think he does the 100 and 200 meters in the uh, uh, Olympics. So things that got canceled that should be right now. Oh, uh, okay. But no one remembers because... Oh. If California's not burning, uh, their police senselessly shooting people in the back in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, and we're all angry about that and just wanted to touch on that as uh, Jacob Blake was shot in the back multiple times and is paralyzed below the waist. Uh, black lives do matter. We've been supporting this cause uh, since day one here in the program. Um, but get out there, be angry, but social distance uh, and wear a mask, please. Uh, you can also find us across social media. Uh, where, Chris? Uh, all the places. All the places. All the places. I think. Everywhere. Yeah, on the YouTube. Brian was actually, that's what he was surfing. I was telling ah, him to check out YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Well, we're on YouTube, right? We're, yeah, we're on the what YouTube. Do we, do? Uh, we have some videos up there, some highlights, some recaps. Oh. We're actually on there live right now. Oh, we're live. Yeah, we're right live now? on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, right. And Facebook and Twitch and Periscope and Instagram. Yeah, all over there. Oh, wow. And great. You, you can go to our website too, Chris. Oh, is that QWT? Chris's. Dot com? Yeah. Uh, but if you go to QWT Chris's. dot com, uh, you can either click the link in our bio or go directly there and get yeah. what? 
You got some coffee there, Chris? Oh, we shout, got coffee. Shout out to shout out to Easy Mark Five. This uh, will be on the way after the show. This Actually, is, smells really good. I forgot how good this one smells. He's also getting a T-shirt. There are new T-shirts coming out this week for season two. They are tie-dye uh, with our lovely faces on it. Um, and you may get a special gift this week uh, if you order from QWTChris.com or click the link in our bio mm. to check out all the fresh merch, including. Coffee mugs. Shout out to Benny Ru Rubo, uh, wow. who actually just purchased one right before the show. Oh, wow. Thanks, Benny. Thanks for your support and everything you're doing over at the Hidden Opponent. We appreciate you. Um, they were our community cause last week. Yep. Uh, maybe we should shout our community cause for this week, Chris. Uh, our community cause this week is Save the Waves. Yes, Save the Waves protects coastal ecosystems around the world through innovative strategies and in partnership with local communities. The Save the Waves app, uh, Endangered Waves, empowers everyday surfers and beachgoers like ourselves to monitor and report coastal threats as they see them. All you have to do is take a photo, select a threat tag, uh, your location, and upload it. It's that easy to help protect the places you love. Uh, if you see something going on that you don't like, whether it's trash or someone doing something stupid, uh, go to Endangered Waves uh, and use the app. Uh, go to savethewaves.org or to at Save the Waves Coalition on Instagram for more information. Ooh. Ooh, uh, I like the little guy in the coffee cup. Uh, maybe you'll have to guess the emoji of the day. Yes, uh, there's we two. Do, we do have a two emojis of the day. If you guessed that uh, right, you go home with a, a little man on the cup. Yeah, holding on for dear life, just like the Chris's are here at the quarantine quarters. Yes, uh, but we are protected today, Chris. Oh, who's uh, our by our sponsor? Pay the bills. Right? Uh, live, live better. What's this, this stuff you got from CVS? Huh? Live better uh, mineral sunscreen. It will take him all episode to rub this in. Uh, as I think it works because it just simply won't come off. Yo, we should, you know what? Like, we could do, we should do like sunscreen masks. Sunscreen masks? Yeah, I think so. And that's gonna help you what? I don't know. This is gonna help you do something? I, I don't, I think so. Yo, know, this is, this stuff, uh... It takes a long time to rub in, and I was told by the man at CVS that it was just slightly longer than normal. Uh, and slightly longer than normal means all day. Right on. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, we got well, a guest we, on. Our guest has been waiting all day. I know. We apologize, folks. Yes. Quarantine the Chris is live in Los Angeles. We appreciate all of you. Uh, as Ryan has some technical difficulties still trying to work out. Why do you keep your screen on for so long, Ryan? This is ridiculous. That high note. You guys are going full steam ahead here. Yeah, we sure are. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing all right. Good to see you. Uh, live in uh, in Oregon, is that right? I am in Southern Oregon now. Wow. And uh, it's not burning in Oregon yet, right? Uh, no, it was a little smoky the other day. Not too bad. Oh, nice. All right on. It How gets it, it gets pretty bad here, but uh, no, we've been lucky this summer. Good to hear. Uh, you've been uh, going up the, the Oregon coast. How have those trips been going for you? I was living up, up north for the last five years uh, on the coast, and it's cold and rainy and beautiful. But, uh, yeah, we got we got out of the rain and uh, back down to the normal summers and got a little closer to family to help with the psycho children. <laughs> <laughs> and how old are your kids, Eric? Uh, four and almost two. Four and two. Oh, wow. Ooh. So automatically distance learning no matter what, then? Yeah. Yeah, they're just running wild. <laughs> I kind of wish I was four and two. I would have no idea what COVID-19 is. Like, I could mm. just live my life and... and yeah, hey, you just it. shit your pants and play with Legos all day. Wait, oh, wow. that, is that any different than what we're doing we're anyway doing now. no i think oh, that's a, yeah. it's a good segue uh to our favorite <laughs> we've been living off of beans over here eric that's all we can afford over here at the castle that's all we got what, what have you been feeding your kids uh organic kale from the farmer's market and mm. no they they eat cheerios and uh bread bread <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right i feel like when i was their age i was just eating like wonder bread and like frosted flakes, probably. Did you guys ever ball up the bread? Do you guys make bread? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just compress it and yeah. just have this like hard bread ball to eat with nothing on it. Yeah. Yeah. Do your kids do yeah. that? Nope. <laughs> I, 
I haven't taught them that yet. Yeah, I don't think they've really lived if they never crushed a piece of bread in their hand and just ate it. Why was that so yeah. good? Why, and why did we ever stop that? I don't know. We could start. We could. We could start right that, now. That could be, I, I feel like there could be a painting that it would look wonderful. I feel like there's a business waiting to just be bread balls that you could sell people. There Ooh. it is. Ryan, put that on a t-shirt. Wait, uh... People have been putting your artwork, Eric Abel, at Abel Arts on t-shirts. Uh, I thought this was an original of yours when I bought it, but it, I think it's a counterfeit. Um, yeah, there's been some, there's been some, uh, some shady people doing some shady stuff lately with my art, but I think they do that with everybody's art. So, so they're just so uh, for everyone who doesn't know, uh, Eric Abel at Abel Arts, uh, joining quarantine. The Chris is live here in Los Angeles. Uh, so there's people that are just taking your artwork off the internet and just mass producing it. Uh, for themselves? Uh, well, to sell. You know, there's there's people that, that get very inspired from some of my art and choose to, to put it on products to sell to other people and take credit for it, which is pretty pretty horrible when artists make their money off, off selling their own art. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty discouraging, but, you know, I, I've been dealing with it a while and... Uh, yeah, what do they say? Flattery. It, copying is, is flat, the most serious form of flattery, but I, I got over being flattered quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. There's, there's people that send me, you know, they'll, they'll try to copy a painting or they'll practice, you know, and, and they'll send me pictures. And, but it's, that's just for fun. You know, they're just doing it for, to, you know, to, to practice be an artist or practice their technique and they get inspired by my stuff. And that's, that's totally fine. But when you, and you start copying work from another artist and selling it uh, without giving them credit or or uh, even acknowledging it. Yeah, right. yeah. Then, then we got a legal problem there. So. Uh, that's funny. There you go. Uh, speak. Our our legal guy Ryan actually was inspired, um, and he actually did a little pothead. Was inspired yes. by you. What do you What do you think hey, of this little pothead? You guys, you guys been uh, looking at the abstract pursuits, haven't you? Oh Ooh, yes, we have. Right? Mm, that's my secret. Uh, that's my secret identity. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, cheers, cheers to you. Not so, not so secret anymore. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to you, Eric, and your secret identity. Uh, he's the Clark Kent slash Superman of, mm. of art, uh, especially with the environment. Um, well, with abstract uh, pursuits, what are you pursuing? Uh, artistic freedom. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, I've been I've been painting the ocean stuff and uh, animal stuff for a long time now. I've just been involved with the surf industry, and you know, I kind of pigeonholed myself into that that kind of that market. And um, you know, it just feels good to branch out a little bit. I have other interests, but it might not be. You know, you gotta. I, I have like a brand as an artist now, and I have to. You know, I feel like I've got to adhere to that a little bit. But um, yeah, so I just decided to make a second brand and. Uh, see where it goes and have more fun and, and just have a little little more freedom with it. And, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you do, you do masks on there. Um, what do you think about this? Like doing starting maybe like some sunscreen masks. Do you think that I, that's going to make it in the, the abstract pursuit? I heard. I think the other Chris should take some paint, some, some more dabs of that and give you maybe make it a little more artistic. Some dots on the forehead. Ooh. There there we go. Here. He's Wait. like, he's like a feral cat. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where, where do you think the dots should go? This is our oh, first yeah, live yeah, face painting with Eric Abel at Abel Arts. This was not in the notes, Ryan. <laughs> you think some dots, Eric? Is that what you think? Uh, yeah, I'm saying give him a give him a half tone pattern on his forehead there. There we go. Be be generous. There we go. Wow. See, it's, look at that. Oh, thank you. I think you need the color oh, of this soul pattern. Yeah, I think you gotta. I, I don't. <laughs> I haven't touched his facial hair. It feels like a like a like a Brillo pad that no one ever wants to touch. <laughs> do you guys have beer product sponsors? What's going on? Uh, we do. Shout to uh, the bearded bastard. Stay bearded. Stay bastardy. Uh, shouldn't, that, shouldn't that beard be soft? You know what? I, he washes his hair like once a quarantine. So do the math. We've uh, reached our max already. Do the math, and he hasn't done it in quite some time. Max out. Yeah. All right. uh, Eric, uh, what is your inspiration behind uh, your art at Able Arts? Um, just being a surfer my whole life, I think. Just uh, being near the ocean and, uh, you know, animals inspire me too. I've been doing a lot of animal stuff. And, um, 
yeah, you know, surf, surfing's been my happy place for, forever, for as long as I can remember. So uh, it just comes natural. I was doodling waves on my school notebooks in high school and uh, just started painting more of it and getting noticed for it. And that's, that's basically it. Right I, mean, I, I, I paint to kind of escape reality it's pretty dark out there right now so i just i like to paint a little palm tree and a little wave and a nice little spot i like to be setting up a hammock or something and yeah play with play play with paint be by myself in the studio not deal with anybody else be recluse that's my favorite thing be in a studio ball up some bread and just uh, hit the camera that's right bread and bread and some Bourbon and we're good to go. Bread and, bread and bourbon. That's, that's, your, that's your new clothing line. You <laughs> might as well start at uh, ericgable.com. Able B and B, right there. Or maybe just a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, Could do that. Bread and bourbon. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking forward to coming up to Oregon for your uh, bread and bourbon. But you, you're also uh, on the search for a, a house right now up there, are you not? We pulled the trigger. We got we we've got one. But we're uh, we're remodeling it right now and going to build a studio on the property. And we got a lot of work to do before we can move in. So we've just been bouncing around uh, Airbnbs and rentals. And we're staying at my wife's, my in-laws' house right now until they get back from there. They've been gone for a couple months. So, oh, nice. yeah, do you- dealing with toddlers without any, well, without 90% of their toys and having zero uh, security and, and – uh, um, routine has proved most difficult. But, it sounds like it. Uh, you I, haven't I played bread. People have it worse. Worse. So I'm, I'm still lucky to be able to have people that buy art during a quarantine. And there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are buying art during a quarantine. Shockingly. Wow. Is it just people who just stare at their walls at home and are like, this shit sucks. I want something new, and then magically you pop up. Yeah, yeah, like that painting behind you should probably be uh, a little able arts, maybe. It could be. Oh, wow. It could be, yeah. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get you down something. Ooh, oh, wow. Ooh, you hear that? Are, are, are you like the the Masks Crusader? When when you leave in your Airbnbs and places you stay, do you just leave an artwork on the wall? <laughs> you know, I've thought about that. I go in a, like, Every time I stay at O-Town, I'm like, I should just bring a rolled up canvas and leave it here for next time. But... <laughs> That'd be funny uh, if that was like idea. your calling card. Like you just like <laughs> you, like you leave a piece of art that's better than anything in that place already, and they get it. They're like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> That'd be I awesome. Like it. Uh, we're on live uh, in Oregon with Eric Abel at Abel Arts on Instagram. Corinth to the Chris is in Los Angeles. Uh, you're also an artist ambassador as well, uh, doing great things for the environment. Uh, we've been trying to get a phone case for his iPhone One. Uh, yeah. uh, but apparently you can't even copy and paste on it yet. Uh-huh. Um, could you talk about uh, all call, the great... Did they call it the iPhone 1? I think so, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a it's an antique, did I think. The, did they have the uh, keypad? No. <laughs> I think it was a flip iPhone, yes. So he had to hold it with two hands like Zach Morris. Yeah, uh, yeah Save the Waves Coalition. They, uh, they've been great great org to work with uh they're doing good things for the uh for the environment for the surf for the surf world and um just been stoked to be able to do art and make art uh that they can use for their campaigns and use for their what was that was that you guys wow that's some, yeah. drag, some drag racing to the ocean here <laughs> it's the beans it's the beans <laughs> uh but yeah it's it's a cool little org to check out um uh, They've got several campaigns going around the world at any given time, and um, you know, just pre- protecting the coast from big developments and stupid shit like the Trump Wall and in Scotland or whatever it's golf course. I mean, um, so go check them out. SaveTheWaves.org. There you go. And get a cool phone case. Yeah, you could get a phone case. Yeah, the Pila the Pila phone case um, collab was pretty cool. I mean, i you know I think I have it right here. This oh, is it. oh, there it is. Oh, it's uh, right there. Yeah, I mean, the, it feels like normal plastic, but you know, you got these little flakes of uh, I don't even know what they use in it, but you could throw this in the compost and it composts, which is awesome. Yeah, so, oh, wow, it's like it's like banana peels or yep, yeah, I don't know what or souls of shells in the ocean or Chris's beard hair ground up. That could be, yeah, just like oh yes, I've. Uh, 
you the cat the cat all the hair is that off the face you guys that's my uh next business venture is uh <laughs> the, i was actually gonna go with bearded bastard but the name's already taken it's okay yeah it's all right is it yeah, what, 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 how, how do you respond when one of these big organizations, you know, do take your, do you have to mobilize a social media force or how do you, how do you handle that? I mean, you can only write so many emails without getting a response back sometimes. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta get the masses going on them. Um, unfortunately, that's what the last one came to where I had to post it on Instagram and let people know what was going on and they, you know, they got a lot of bad bad messages and comments and all their images and uh they finally reached out back out to me and responded and took everything down but um yeah that's that's blows me away there's people doing doing business like that where they're just you know stealing art and putting it on products it's it's mind-boggling but it happens all the time it's crazy you go on like all those websites that are just print on demand like red bubble and and society six and there's people just they just take art from wherever they can find it and, you know, put it on their products and hope people buy it. Huh. But, but you had mentioned during COVID that your business was doing quite well. Are, are you painting a lot during the quarantine? No, I'm, uh, I'm losing my mind because I have no studio. And, uh, you know, I've got backed up commission pieces. Yeah, people are getting commissions. People are buying paintings, even though the galleries have been closed. They're finally opening up, which is good. Uh, but... Yeah, orders on the site, order and prints and stuff. Luckily, um, our our printer and framer in Portland that that uh, does all our all our prints has been open this whole time um, and been able to ship orders. But yeah, people are just I don't know what the deal is. They're sitting at home buying stuff, so it's it's amazing. I thought I was going to be eating those beans with my kids. <laughs> Now everyone wants so, new art from Eric Abel. I know. I know. I freaked out. I had like my first real anxiety panic attack, I think, ever um, when all this shit kind of started. And it was like, I'm an artist and people like people are only going to be buying necessities like toilet paper right now. They're not going to be buying like, you know, luxury items like art. But, you know, this this market in, in this country is so massive. I mean, we're, we're talking about you know almost 400 million people in this country that are that you can potentially market to and you know half those people are, are still doing fine so well, that's great that your business <laughs> is still doing well i mean i guess you could have pivoted to doing like abstract toilet paper, paper. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah i think that's yeah. hey. i think that's called paper mache we're getting some ideas business options going here on this right. call what if we like paper mache? Mache? You, can, you can make it reusable I mean, you too. It's super during gross. Quarantine, because of quarantine, because of COVID. There you so go. You're like starting a new business because of it. Perfect. Silver linings. I like to I like to try to focus on, but it's hard. It's hard to focus on that. On the on the little things that are you look back on and, and realize that are good when you're when you're in the middle of it. But uh, Ryan said that you were excited about having uh, your dream studio soon at the home you just purchased. Oh, uh, could, so stoked. Could you talk about that and uh, all the cool art you're going to be doing there? Oh, I'm so excited. I can't even contain it, man. I, I, uh, this, is, this is like, I'm turning 40 this year. I'm going to be uh, able, I was able to buy a house, another house, well, sold our first house up, up on the North Coast, bought this house, had some money left over to, to um, remodel and build a studio in the front yard, and um, I'm so excited. It might take a while, but um, when I finally get in there, it's uh, it's, the, it's the ultimate. So I'm I'm pumped. I cannot wait. I'm going to be making so much art. It's uh, I've been out of a studio since February, so um, been trying to maintain sanity without being be, having an outlet without beating my family up so mm. uh yeah well, you know, recently it looks like you just picked up uh some crayons are we gonna expect some crayon art from you or maybe some <laughs> colored pencils that so, we can get that's all we got see legos and crayons i've been on a kick i mean they're fun it takes you back to being a little kid so uh yeah crayons wax paintings let's do it see wow perfect i can wow. trace well what do you got there you actually have crayons there uh, we, have, we, have, we have colored pencils. Have colored pencils. We used to actually. We have a superhero coloring book that we, that we <laughs> use it for, <laughs> and, and a coloring book made for like eight-year-old girls. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
keep, keeps it keeps the same. Whatever yeah, works. It does. And then we have paint by numbers. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's I've been what... thinking about. I've been thinking about doing some of my art on paint by numbers often. Man. Really? Yeah. How does that work? We, you have to just take an existing piece of art and just kind of break it into chunks, or? Yeah, yeah. There's companies that you just send in your art, and they they do it for you. They number it. They they you know fill up the little paint things and figure out what colors you need and box it all up and make it nice and charge your money for it. Oh, all right. Yeah. On. So you would actually get paid though for this one. Well, if I yeah, if I sold it, I could you know I could order you know twenty sets and see how they do. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. we we would yeah, when you when this business the probably the most probable business idea that we talked about yeah. when this one comes launches can you can you reach out to Ryan let us know <laughs> yeah uh, we're on live with Eric Abel at uh, Abel Arts in Oregon quarantine with the Chris's uh, Eric what uh, is your favorite thing to paint I know you haven't been painting since February but what piece of yours uh, that's been selling during COVID is, is your personal favorite or is it like your children you can't pick one or the other? Uh, no, I can pick one. I can pick one of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the girl. The girl is way nicer and easier. Uh, the painting though, uh, I've been liking the animals. I don't know. I, I've, uh, yeah, no, you can't pick a penny. There's there's one I did for a friend. Uh, did a little trade. He did some work at, at my previous house. Um, up in Cannon Beach, he lives up in Cannon Beach, and I did a big kind of, um, it's more like a sculpture almost, it's painting with pieces of old wood and wood hanging down and different parts painted, and that, that's definitely my favorite piece, hands down, that was a, that was a big one, it's on that, it's actually on the, it's the first thing you see when you go to ablearts.com. Right. Um, so I want to be doing more of that, just having a space, I was stuck in the garage, I didn't have a big studio out there, um. When I was down in Ventura, uh, before we moved back up to Oregon, uh, I had a giant eighteen hundred square foot warehouse studio with oh, offices. Oh wow! That was like, oh, that was so fun. Just just having the space to, to make whatever I want, uh, have the freedom a little bit. So I'm I'm looking forward to that again. Be able to make some big big sculptural stuff and just get messy and fuck around a bunch. That's awesome. If I can get yeah. paid to do that, that'd be, I guess we kind of do that. That's so yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys fuck around awful lot. I've That's true. <laughs> That's true. All quarantine, Eric. Yes, yes. I mean, I feel like everybody's going a little crazy right now. I feel like we're we're at the end. We're at the limit here, and uh, I just. I fear what's going to happen in the wintertime when everybody's cooped up and all these restaurants. Well, I mean, you guys are in a place where restaurants can be outside year round, but. You go to most of the rest of the country, and people are going to be losing their fucking mind, man. Yeah, but they'll be, be losing their mind down. and able to buy able right, arts. Wow. Right, right, right. Yeah. And hopefully those gubby checks keep coming so people can feel like they're getting free money to spend. There you go. Yeah, you might as well take I think this. That's part of the, I think that's part of the reason. Why yeah, you take this the, whole thing's working. You take the $1,200 Trump bucks, as my brother calls it, and uh, <laughs> just buy one of your uh, wonderful prints. That's right. Or a couple. <laughs> or all of them. Or all of them. What what seems to uh, sell the best? I, I know you do a lot of uh, like seascapes and waves and animals and whatnot. What what do people generally tend to buy the most right now? It's both. It's it's all it's all over the map. I mean, we have some top sellers. There waves. There's top selling animals, and uh, the bear always does good. The, the elk do good, and uh, you know, happy little palm tree places do good. Nice little waves. Yeah, people want to you know be near the ocean, bring it into their house a little bit. It's wonderful. Yeah, I feel like you just brought it in the ocean right now. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. I think this is the painting actually. Yeah, it, it might be by the time that your sunscreen rubs in in twenty twenty never. Yeah, it looks like the it looks like the moon cycles up on his forehead there. I like it. No, oh, see that that's exactly the, what I was going for, Eric. The moon yeah, cycles. Exa yeah. 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 <laughs> Artists know. Artists know. <laughs> if anyone watching guys, right now wants guys, to, <laughs> you guys have artistic talent at all? Or just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm artistic verbally. Mm. Uh, some might say we're artistic. I think our moms do. Um, I think our art is still somewhere. Autistic or artistic? Art artistic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we we bring the R's to it because we're. Pirates. Er. We're the Captain 
<laughs> Captains of the art world. I can't wait to re rewatch this and look at your face like this the entire time. <laughs> it burns. It's actually like burning my skin. I actually don't like. I, I think like this is de this is definitely burning. It's like I don't think it's. It you you think it's not made to use as just? No, I don't. It's gonna take you know. all day to rub it in. I'm telling you. You're having an allergic reaction. I think yeah. I'm having an allergic reaction on air. So uh, Chris, according to the Chris's first a live 911 call as his face is burning off. You're about to break out in hives on your balls. Prob probably. I actually just pulled those out for the first time today. <laughs> uh, my wool balls for drying. I added Ooh. like some lavender to my yeah. to my wool balls. It actually smells pretty good. Yeah. Shout out to Molly Suds. Yeah. Thank you, Molly Suds. I haven't been able to stop doing laundry. We got this new this new laundry detergent yesterday, and I haven't yeah, been able I to saw, stop doing I it. To look, I started to look at that, uh, listen to that. It looked uh, pretty legit. It's wonderful. He, he's done like 13 loads of laundry, and we have to pay for laundry here in our building. Uh, but he won't stop doing laundry because he loves the super powder so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's inspirational. Um, speaking of inspirational, uh, Correct me wrong if we're okay to talk about this. You talk about um, some things that have been inspirational in your life, some psychedelics. Would you be open to to diving into how those have been transformative in uh, your art and just your your worldview? Your worldview. Uh, completely. Definitely not shy about that. Cool. Uh, first of all, what's your what's your guys' relationship with psychedelics? We have a positive relationship with everything. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I mean, I've always been a big advocate. Uh, I think they are powerful medicines, uh, powerful substances that should. Uh, I mean, you could go both ways. You could take it lightly or take it seriously, but uh, you definitely. I, I think you get the most value when you take it seriously. Um, I've I've been doing psychedelics since I was in high school, and um, I've had pretty much nothing but really really positive experiences and it's definitely opened my eyes it's you know it's mind expanding it it uh, back then it really opened my eyes to what was possible in life and and just realizing how everything's connected and how we're all you know it's we're just on this rock together floating through space and um it just it it lets you zoom out a little bit and and it it humbles you at times uh lets you evaluate your um, relationships with yourself, your your family, your the things you like, what you're doing in life, and um, I just think a, a lot of people could benefit from from uh, yeah from this stuff. And you know, it's it's a shame that it has such a bad stigma from the '60s, uh, but you know, we're coming back around again. And then, in terms of your art, I mean, is that in with your abstract art in particular, is that something uh, that is born out of that experience? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, for an artist, psychedelics is cheating, man. I mean, it's, just, <laughs> it's like game it's genie. Like, yeah, it's like steroids for a bodybuilder. I mean, the as a visual person, the 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 patterns, the colors, the images, the visions you see are there. It's cheating. You're getting you're you're getting a free ride. Um, so that's that's definitely it was my I think my second time doing mushrooms in high school about sixteen or seventeen. Uh, it was the second time um, we had a buddy and I had gone back to the beach where a group of friends had first done it um, a couple of weeks prior, and you know chasing that same thing, um, it, chasing that same experience. I mean, it was it was magical. It was it was life changing. It was life altering. It was it was everything. It was it was beautiful. And we we went back to try to do it again. And you know it was so so. But I went back that night to home, to my house, my parents' house, and closed the door and, in my room and got out a canvas and paints and just started painting this painting. It was a like this. I painted way different back then. It was like a wizard <laughs> sitting on a mushroom with a with a magical book in this crazy valley with sunsets, and his, his hands were like producing this this earth with these floating clouds around it, the stars and the moon. And, and <laughs> I submitted it. I finished it. I stayed up all night doing it, and I finished it uh, and submitted it to this regional art competition one first place so wow there you wow. go <laughs> see cheat code the eric able yeah, cheat code so, 
yeah that's like that was like direct inspiration from you know psychedelics that that actually proved to be <laughs> successful that's awesome do, do you still uh do you still have that piece of art i do i do it's in storage somewhere Ooh. yeah that'll be that'll yeah. be somewhere in the eric Abel museum one day i know i know i need to hang it in my bathroom or something yeah. Uh, someone uh, someone said uh, great wrestler, surfer, artist, and dad. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wrestler. Yeah. Who's that? Who said wrestler? Uh, RW93010. I'm guessing that's the area code. Could be. Or zip code. Zip code, yes. Yeah, yeah. I used, I used to wrestle in high school. Must have been a. Right on. We, fellow. You know, you were a sellout for wrestling? What? No, he said fellow. Oh, fellow. fellow. A fellow wrestler. Fellow. Oh, fellow. His, oh. His, his hearing is bad and his ability to rub sunscreen in is worse. Yeah, that's all right. It's surfer's ears a real thing. Oh, it's it's Coach Wilson. Oh, yeah, Coach. Coach. Sh- shout out to Coach Wilson. Hey, Coach. What's up, Coach? I've never wrestled before. Uh, I'd be probably terrible at it. I, don't know. I was horrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> Good that, good that you chose painting instead uh, I, of... Uh, I dropped out to surf more. There, there you go. Right on. Yeah. You uh, you grew up down down here uh, in SoCal and have escaped a, a couple times. Um, yeah. What was your inspiration to, to move uh, up to the Oregon coast and well, all around Oregon now? Well, I was I, when I graduated high school, I was working. I was airbrushing surfboards for Robert Surfboards there in Ventura. Um, going to Ventura Community College, just dicking around, surfing all day, being a beach bum. Um, and I was super into snowboarding too, so I moved out to Utah for a winter to, to ride, and then uh, I figured I should finish up school. I wanted to be an art teacher, um, so I wanted to finish school because I thought, man, I could just have my summers off and bail and go travel, and that sounded – get be paid still. I was like, yes, let's do this. Yeah. And um, I – I needed to go to a college that didn't require testing to get in, that was cheap, and that was near a mountain where I could ride. So Ashland, Oregon, which is where I moved back to now, 20 years later, I moved here to go to SOU, and and it was perfect. They had a whole new art department. I graduated uh, with a bachelor's in fine art, and I was about to go into the the teaching, the one-year teaching program, and I was just like, I I don't want to – if I'm going to be an art teacher, I've got to go out and be an artist first and prove that I can do it successfully in, in order to teach students how to, how to be an artist. Or, so I, uh, I just decided to go and, and try to do it myself. And, um, you know, looking back, I don't, think I, I don't think I could ever go back to school and get a degree to teach again. Uh, now, but, you, now you'd have to do it virtually. Can you imagine, like... Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if you had to teach art virtually. Horrible. Oh, anything I... virtually. Teaching anything. These, oh, these teachers are bummed. I've got a number of teacher friends and, and family that are teachers, and I, I mean, sounds sounds horrible. Yeah. But also being a kid and virtually learning and not being able to go to school and hang out with your friends sucks too. So. Yeah, it all sucks. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Sucks. That's why if you want to feel better, you should buy uh, Eric Abel's art at hey, Abel Art on Instagram. It does make me feel better, actually. Like, I, I think I, I wrote about this in a post when this all started. It was like, you know, I, I don't have any of my art around me. You know, I'm just in this like shitty rental with with no art. And I usually, you know, my whole house is full of my art. My stu- I can go to my studio and just you know look around and see it. And man, that has an effect when I don't have any of that around me, and I realize that. So you know, art art saves. Art saves. And uh, a fan of the program, also the godfather of the program, the W0Z, says, go ducks, and I like to finger paint. <laughs> Do you have any finger painting tips for uh, the watch? <laughs> uh, finger painting. Man, my kids are better at it than I am. But, uh, there you go. Yeah. Let the, kid, let the kids teach you. There you go. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Your face. Is your face burning? Well, I was trying. I was trying, I was like trying to open. Up. I was trying to open the paint, but they 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 glue these like shut. I swear, I can't open it. I was gonna try to finger paint. A lot, a lot of technical difficulties in here, Ryan. Ryan, you want to switch places? Right now. Yeah. Oh, there we go. See, look at. It. See, what's the what's the paint by number picture? 
Uh, this one. Oh, see, look at that. Look, see, you got to get the blue base. You got to get the white base to get it down. Everyone knows right. that. Ooh. Matching, matching your hanky there. <laughs> Always got to match the hanky. That's my go-to mask. I'm, I'm a, I'm a handkerchief mask guy. And we're, I'm, I'm designing some, some uh, screen printed handkerchiefs right now that we're going to be releasing later, later this year. Oh, cool. oh, sick! That's awesome. I, you know what? I see all, I see a bunch of my artist friends releasing masks with, you know, there are obviously that's everybody's doing it. Yeah. I just, I can't do it, dude. I can't pull the trigger. It a mask, a COVID mask just represents such a negative thing for me. And I just, I don't want to put my art on such a negative thing. I just can't do it. And, you know, when this is all over, those masks are just going to go in the trash. Yeah. And, um, you know, I use it. I, I rock a hanky all the time. It's in my back pocket. I use it for blowing my nose and wiping my face and whipping my wife once in a while. But. Yeah. See, so now you can blow your nose, wipe your face, <laughs> and whip your you wife with an a, Eric Abel design. You can get a good snap on a, on a 22 inch hanky, man. <laughs> Uh, you uh, don't have to be crazy to work here, but uh, they'll train you. <laughs> they'll Is train, that how you train her? Train her, yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, the W0Z said, I will find some children. Thank you. And uh, Danik, <laughs> Danik Yuseba, 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 uh said, what is your inspiration for your art? Um, the ocean, surfing nature i don't ever paint anything that's man-made um you hear that you hear my daughter that screaming. sounds like it was man-made yeah that's that was yeah a lot of men involved in that one um i'm busy uh nice there you go finger painting um yeah yeah the ocean nature animals i you know i uh, at, at heart i'm a I'm a minimalist. I like minimal art. I like just dealing with shapes and composition and, um, you know, how all that relates to each other. And I think that's kind of reflected more of my abstract stuff. Sometimes it's just, you know, non-representational. It's not really anything, but, um, yeah, I'm just inspired by, by nature when it comes down to it. And, you know, I've, I've been paid to do a couple, add a little man-made things here and there in some commercial projects, but I, I, I try to, talk them out of it every time yeah. what about your inspiration for your uh your abstract uh your uh abstract pursuits yeah like that's masks yeah the i mean well the mask kind of just you know i got this new ipad pro and got the apple pencil and when i moved down here because i didn't have a studio so i was just like i need a, i need to be able to do digital sketches i had this old big Wacom tablet that I would draw on that was connected to my computer with like 20 wires hanging out. So huh. I needed to get a little more, I needed to keep up with the times. And, uh, so I got this iPad pro and just started, you know, messing around with it. Um, but I, I took a picture of myself, drew on it and then, you know, did that on a couple friends and it was, it, it, it just seemed to, I don't know, it was touching something. So like, in the times right now i don't know what it was it was just something about these masks that everybody's wearing and i you know it's just so negative and i wanted to make them more stylized and design and beautiful and something that was different and positive to look at um so that's kind of how that little project came out i i still have a bunch you know, i had a bunch of friends that sent me pictures um but, and then having them as my friends that I'm like looking at that I haven't seen in person, you know, yeah. it's just like, it, I don't know, it, it's weird. It's kind of, it's weirdly satisfying and just a weird little project that is very uh, personal or something. I don't know. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Just going with it. And that's the great thing about the abstract pursuits is that I'm just, I don't care. You know, I'm just doing whatever I want and I'm, you know, whatever I feel like doing, I'm going to throw it up and I don't have to feel like I'm pigeonholed into this certain like artistic direction. So it, uh, it's working out. It gives me a little, gives me a little uh, place to play around and be, be weird. Talk about psychedelics a little more. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, Eric, uh, Abel at Abel Arts, uh, thank you for joining Corn to the Christmas today. Is there anything that we should be looking forward to with your art the rest of the year, uh, including the hankies? Yes, yes. So uh, we're going to be doing a big holiday release. Um, you know, we uh, in the past we I've usually just 
I did a run of hats. I'll do a run of hats every once in a while or some sticker packs and just let them sell out and, and you know, just kind of flop around and not do it again. Uh, Cause it's, you know, it's tough running a business and shipping orders and deal with all the business stuff. And, um, but for this holiday season, we're going big. We're doing stickers and pins and patches and buttons wow. and shirts and hankies and hats and, I don't know. Just keep adding to it. Just you know, I'm just gonna be a shipping slave for for the holiday season. But it's all it's all right because I it's just something fun and different to put my heart on. And um, you know, uh, I like stoking people out. And a lot of people are been asking for different things and bringing back the hats and whatnot. So uh, yeah, just gonna go crazy. So keep an eye out for that. There you go. I'm fun, fun for the whole family. I'm looking forward to uh, some, puzzles. Some puzzles Ooh, Whoa! Whoa! really shout out to yeah. andy there's a quarantine of the christmas puzzle with our faces on it that's almost complete right <laughs> nice yeah. nice i mean I, that's a everybody's puzzling right now so you got nothing else to do yeah it's one literally of nothing else to do. to do what about <laughs> um able ornaments like uh mm. so i would love to have your balls on my christmas tree um I don't know. I've, I've got a very, uh, kind of, I'm kind of a Grinch, man. I'm ooh, a Grinch. Ooh, I don't like, I don't like all this tree cutting. I don't like all this, uh, you know, bribing kids all year with presents and no real Santa Claus and no elves. And, uh, I think it's a weird thing, man. It's too much. <laughs> Do you know why? Cause this is a man who likes painting real things. Oh, yes. you, you won't see him painting Santa. All, all my paintings are, completely made up but <laughs> but of real objects or items right, or right, fluffy right. furry woodland animals right right a bear is real so is a wave right yeah, there you go uh, we have uh, some puzzle fans so, that, um, so you know what chris i'm not gonna do an ornament oh wow I'm not no. gonna do it. foot down it's, that's Sorry. fine i'm looking forward Sorry. to the puzzle uh you can you can string the hole through some of those pieces and do a little Oh, do that's a actually, rope like that. Perfect. That's actually a great right. idea. That's probably the best way to do a puzzle because you don't like don't even finish it. There you go. Who, who finishes it? There's always a piece missing, and we have a we have like a shag carpet that eats everything. Uh, so there are puzzle pieces carpet. from puzzles gone by that we've never completed. There's always yeah, one missing. Sense. There's always one missing, always and well. we seem to find that puzzle piece the next time we're doing a puzzle, and so we never actually complete one puzzle. Nope. Oh, these are first world problems. Yeah, these really are. Hundred uh, <laughs> percent. Well, uh, Eric Abel at Abel Arts, uh, thank you for joining Quarantine the Christmas today. Uh, we thank appreciate you, you, brother. We hope to uh, ball up some bread with you <laughs> uh, along the Oregon coast, or maybe in Ventura one day. Whenever Bourbon it's safe and to bread. Let's do this. There you go. Sweet. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks so Cheers, much. Cheers, man. Appreciate you. Woo. Sweet. That was fun. Like, uh, uh, that was Eric Abel at Abel Arts on Instagram. Also check out his website, ericabel.com. Uh, Eric, E-R-I-K, Abel, E-B-E-L.com. Shout out to the fly that continues to fly around to our place that we tried to catch yesterday, but I was told to humanely let it go. Uh, and also the person who's responsible for finishing this puzzle that's been dominating our coffee table for at least two months. Yo, I've actually perfected the catch and release of flies. Have you? Yeah. And looking like that, or? Well, you gotta sneak up on them, Chris. Oh, uh, yes. No, you, you, you put, yes, see, now that I'm white, I blend into the walls. Oh, wow. So you'll never, you'll never, they'll never, this, that's why I put this on, the, the, the bug will never suspect, suspect me. Oh, never suspect him. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Palm Springs, California, and a coffee drinker. Shout out to Easy Mark, who uh, didn't want to tell him because he was putting in so many great emojis, uh, but he did win the emoji contest of the day. It was a surfer, and it was paint. Uh, as well. Uh, so you will be getting a little man who grasps onto a cup for dear life, uh, just like the Chris's. Yes, and uh, uh, similar to you, Mark, uh, it seems to uh, lose its trunks every once in a while after it's been um, used a bit, um, after when its uh, trunks are in the wash for with, what the Molly said. Uh, yeah, shout out to Molly Suds. This man did so much laundry today that he no one else could do it in the whole building. Uh, and since going back to yesterday, too. And yeah. yesterday. You, you've, uh, you've taken over the entire laundry room. There's only one washer and dryer, folks. Yes. Well, yeah. me too. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, shout out to you, Easy Mark. Congratulations on winning. We promise we'll send this to you sooner than later as the USPS takes forever so we can just blame them. Uh, we're quarantined. The curses do this every day. That ends in Y, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us for a Hang 10 Tuesday. No trunks in his junk, Easy Mark. Wow. Uh, check out our website for all the fresh merch, whether you want a sticker, a coffee cup, uh, or uh, there's one more of these limited edition Season 1 t-shirts left before the Season 1 and 2 comes out this week. I was promised, and I still haven't heard from Davey, so I have no idea if that's right or not. Hmm. You know what's some good news, though, Chris? What? Uh, tomorrow, our guest. She oh. brings a lot of joy. Oh, joy to the world, Morgan. Yes, she brings oh. so much joy to the world. Yep. Um, you know what else brings joy to the world? Who? Our community costs. Oh, we... Save the Waves. Yes, yeah, Save the Waves. Oh, yeah. Uh, shout to Save the Waves. Uh, if you don't want one of their fresh phone cases designed by Eric Abel, uh, you can also check out their app, the Endangered Waves app, uh, or go to them on the gram if you're on that right now. Uh, or if you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or Periscope watching us live, go to savethewaves.org for all the great Save the Waves information. Uh, Ryan's got it. Yeah, yes, he does. Uh, quarantine of the Chris's, thank you again. Uh, please check us out tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern with Joy Morgan. Uh, of package free and uh, just a child of the earth, Chris. A child, a resident um, from the earth, Chris. There you go. Saving it yeah. and saving the waves. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We'll uh, hang 10 tomorrow. Your face is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, play the music louder. Goodbye, Ryan, and 